All right, hey gang, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, section 2.8 here, and we're going to be looking at a lot of review things from, from your past, and I hear you've been going over it in physical science as well. We're going to be talking about slope, and then the slope-intercept form, point-slope form, standard form, um, and so, uh, yeah, just a lot of review here. Hopefully you remember a lot of it from last year. So, when I take a look at uh, slope, Okay, my professor in college used to write TTK at the top of the board, and then he'd list a couple of things that we were going to cover for the day. Things to know, things to know. So the slope, uh, many of you remember the slope is rise over run, which is good, okay? Um, and in some of you, if you've taken some math classes here, the rise, if I think about the coordinate plane, The rise deals with the y values and the run deals with the x values. So some of you may have written out the equation like this, delta x over delta y. Now what does that mean? It means the change in the y values over the change in the x values, okay? Now the formula oftentimes I identify as m because m is the variable we use for slope is going to be this. That change in the y values, you can just write down y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, So you can either count it if you graph it out, or you can use the slope formula either way. Okay. Now for the slope-intercept form, the reason why we call it the slope-intercept form is because it involves both the slope and the y-intercept. Okay. Um, this is the equation that we most often like our equations in. It's, it's easily graphed, you know, you can solve it from there. So if I were to go ahead and do something like this, um, m is equal to the slope of the equation, and b is the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. And don't forget to always graph this first. Graph first. You always graph the y-intercept first. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the point-slope form, uh, I don't think you've probably used it before. I'm introducing it here. You will use it in Algebra 2, guaranteed. Uh, and so here's the equation for uh, the point slope form. If I were to go y sub 2, now let's just do y. Here we go. y minus y sub 1 equals m x minus x sub 1. Okay. Now to show you how to use this, um, uh, you when you have a point and a slope, you can use the point slope form and it's pretty simple. Okay. So uh, the point, let's say I give you a point like this. Uh, the point is going to be 5, negative 3, okay? x sub 1, y sub 1. And your slope is going to be uh, 3 fourths, okay? If I go ahead and plug these values in over here, y minus the y value, which is negative 3, the slope is 3 fourths, x minus the x value, which is 5, that equation, actually I would simplify it by double, making the double negatives positive. Okay, that equation right there is point slope form. Okay, and you can plug that into Desmos um, and it will give you the equation of the line. Now, uh, I will tell you, it's not as user friendly as this up here, okay? How do I get it into that equation so I can actually see it, okay? If I was to graph this, know this, the opposite of this value is my y value. The opposite of this value is my x value. So I would graph that point, and from that point, I would go up 3 and over 4, or down 3 and left 4, okay? But if I wanted to go ahead and, and solve this, ooh, ooh, I forgot something here. Um, shh, don't forget that right there, okay? Got to have those parentheses. If I were to go ahead and solve for y, I could actually get it back into that form that we're most familiar with. So if I go ahead and do this, y plus 3 is equal to 3 fourths of x minus uh, 15 over 4. If I write that out, 15 over 4, 4 goes into that 3 times with 
And about three left over. Three and three fourths. Okay, we have that right there. Now, <clears throat> I do want to go ahead and solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. That ends up giving me this equation, y equals 3 fourths x minus 6 and 3 fourths. Okay? Now, if I've done my, <clears throat> my algebra correctly there, um, I should have the same equation as the initial equation, this up here. Okay? Actually, I'll do it this one here. To show you that, I'm going to go ahead and project Desmos here. Mm -hmm. Graphing calculator. And I'm going to type in both of those equations. Now I want to check my, yeah, we're good. For some reason when I did this earlier with my algebra class, it kicked off and then I ended up looking like a fool because they couldn't see what I was talking about on Desmos. So, I uh, gotta love technology. Three-fourths x uh, minus 5. Okay, so there's the equation of line right there. Okay, if I go ahead and graph the other one in slope intercept form, minus 6 and 3 fourths divided by 4. Okay, you'll notice blue to red, blue to red, they're going back and forth, it's the same exact line, okay? So, uh, again, don't be, don't be afraid to use Desmos to check some things. I do want to see your work, but that would be an, an excellent way to check things, okay? Um, I'm just going to say this, standard form, uh, we have standard form as AX plus BY is equal to C, okay? Um, that is the standard form right there. All right, now, uh, what we could do to just show you an example in standard form, if, uh, if an equation was given to you like this, uh, 9x minus 3y is equal to 12, okay, that's standard form right there, but it's not super user-friendly. Now, you can type that into Desmos, and it'll give you an equation, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 9x from both sides, okay? And then I'm going to divide through by negative 3. Okay. So if you can't see it there, there you go. Okay. That's my equation right there. And again, you can double check by plugging both of these into Desmos and saying, hey, are they the same or not? Okay. Um, parallel lines. For what we need to know, parallel lines. I'll move this down a little bit. Parallel lines. Uh, have the same slope and a different y-intercept. If you think about it, if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they are the same lines, okay? Um, perpendicular lines, now remember, uh, these are lines that never intersect in our coplanar, okay? They never intersect, which is why they have the same slope, okay? These lines do intersect at a right angle. So what's their relationship? What's their slope relationship? Um, I'm going to say this. They are the opposite. And when I mean opposite, they go from positive to negative, okay? If one's positive, one's got to be negative. I'll explain that more in here in a second. Reciprocal slopes. Okay, now, uh, reciprocal, what does that mean? Do you remember from <clears throat> when you were younger? Reciprocal means to switch the fraction. Okay? Opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay? Or, there's another requirement here that they could possibly be. When x equals a number and y equals a number, okay? When x equals a number, it's a vertical line. When y equals a number, it's a horizontal line. When vertical and horizontal lines intersect, just like this right here, horizontal, vertical, you're going to have that right angle, okay? So I'll give you some examples here. Uh, if I was to go ahead and do 
something like this, one half, okay? The opposite of that would be negative, and the reciprocal would be two over one. If I give you negative four thirds, the opposite of that would be this, uh, and the reciprocal would be three fourths, so positive three fourths, okay? If I were to give you a negative five, the opposite would be positive, and the reciprocal, because this is over one, is one fifth, okay? Oops, there you go. Okay, so the opposite reciprocal slopes. Um, just to go back again to this idea of x equaling a number and y equaling a number, if I give you x is equal to three, okay, on the coordinate plane, that would look like this. One, two, three. That would be this line right here. So x equals three. If I were to give you y equals two, that line right there would be y equals two, okay? And you can see it, that's a right angle right there, so they're always gonna be perpendicular, okay? All right, now, to walk you through a couple of examples here, I'm gonna want you to finish up uh, these right here. Um, if I start with, here's the directions, are the following lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither, okay? Well, if I look at this first one right here, um, well, yeah. The slope of this first one is positive two, the slope of this one is negative two. They are the opposites of each other, but they're not the reciprocal, meaning two and then one over two. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be a neither, okay? I encourage you, if you didn't understand that, to graph that in Desmos and take a look there and say, hey, does this make sense or not, okay? Um, for number two, as I look at the slope of the lines, positive nine, negative one ninth. One's positive, one's negative. One's nine over one, one's one over nine. So this is gonna be perpendicular. Okay, and don't forget the symbol for perpendicular, that upside down T, okay? This one right here, X equals seven, Y equals four. You can graph that out in Desmos, but since it's X equals number and Y equals number, I'm gonna say this is also perpendicular, okay? Now for the last two, four and five, I'm gonna encourage you to solve for y in both of the last two equations. And then evaluate, are the lines gonna be parallel, perpendicular, or neither, okay? I've got two last examples here. I know this is running a little long, and I apologize. Um, here's what the first one says. It says, determine the equation of a line that is parallel to a line with points four, negative two, and negative four, negative four, and passes through negative four, two. Okay, so if it's going to be parallel, I'm going to circle this, it has to be parallel, we got to be thinking the same slope. Well, we don't know what the slope is, so I'm going to use my slope equation. Okay, now remember, here's what the slope formula is. Okay, so this is x sub 1, y sub 1. This is x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, so what we're looking at is this, um, y sub 2, so negative 4. So we have negative 4 as x sub, uh, y sub 2, and we're going to subtract negative 2 as y sub 1. If I do the same thing with the x's, x sub 2 is negative 4, x sub 1 is uh, 4, so minus x sub 1 is 4, okay? And so what we're looking at here is this, if we make the double negative a positive right there, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Uh, negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, and that becomes a positive 1 fourth. So right now, my slope is a positive 1 fourth, okay? Now, because it's parallel, I'm going to keep that same slope, and it's going to pass through this point right here, negative 4, 2. So as I put this out here, the slope again is 1 fourth, and my point is negative 4, 2. I'm going to use this as my x sub 1 and y sub 1, in my point slope form. Y minus Y sub one equals M X minus X sub one, okay? So if we do this, Y minus Y sub one is equal to the slope X minus X sub one. Notice there that I'm subtracting a negative, so I'm putting the parentheses around that, minus X sub one. Um, that becomes a double negative, which is a positive. So if I distribute this through the parentheses, I get one fourth x 
let's see here, one fourth of four is one. Ooh. Okay, and then if I wanna get y by itself, because a lot of times we wanna convert this into slope intercept form, I'm gonna go ahead and add two to both sides. y equals one fourth x plus three, okay? Now again, you can check this formula to make sure it's the right formula by actually plugging in this formula up here. And if both formulas are the same, uh, when you graph them, then you know that you've done things correctly as far as working the algebra out from here down to here, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna do is this, let's see here. I wanna go ahead and do the last problem. And looking at the last problem here, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, determine the equation of a line that is perpendicular, okay? Before I do anything else, I need to know that my slopes are the opposite reciprocal of each other. Opposite reciprocals, okay? So I'm first gonna figure out what the, what the slope is of this line. So I'm gonna do, I'll say this is x sub one, y sub one x sub 2, y sub 2, okay? So my slope, again, writing down the formula just so I don't forget this, is going to end up being y sub 2, 4, minus y sub 1, negative 2. And then x sub 2, 5, minus x sub 1, negative 5, okay? So 4 plus 2 is 6. 5 plus 5 is 10, and if I reduce that down, which I should always do when I have fractions, 3 fifths is my slope, okay? Now, that's the slope of this line that contains these two points. I need the perpendicular slope because I want a line that's going to be perpendicular to this one. So if the slope of my line, this original line, is 3 fifths, I'm going to do it like this, my perpendicular slope is gonna be negative 5 thirds, okay? Now, from there, if I go ahead and use that with this point right here, um, negative 3, 6, okay? I'm gonna say that this is x sub 1, y sub 1, and I'm gonna use all of this information and plug it into my point slope form, okay? So if I do that, y minus the y value is 6, the slope is negative 5 thirds, x minus the x value, which ends up being negative 3, okay? Now, the double negative makes a positive, so I'm going to change that to a positive, and I'm going to distribute that into the parentheses here, okay? Now, negative 5 thirds goes with x, this is going to end up being negative here. Um, 5 thirds of 3 is going to end up being 5. Okay, you can type that into your calculator, but you're going to end up getting 5 right there. How you would type that in your calculator would just be this. Negative 5 thirds, and we're going to multiply that by 3. Gives you negative 5. Okay, so hopefully we saw that. Okay. Now, Again, to get x by or y by itself, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And you get y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 1. Okay? So keeping this in mind, um, let's see here. Perpendicular to, yep. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, if you want to check this equation out on Desmos and check this equation out on Desmos, they should be on uh, the exact same line. Okay, so again, making sure I answered this correctly, determine the equation of a line that is perpendicular to a line with points as follows and passes through. Yep, we're good. Okay, so there you go. Um, other than that, folks, uh, if you have any other questions, come back and talk to me, but I do want you to finish up. I think you'd have just two problems from the rest of the, uh, the work there. And so, yeah, come back, talk to me. We'll figure things out. But again, what I'm doing here is I'm not forgetting a lot of this stuff here. My slope formula, you got to memorize that. Uh, slo uh, slope intercept form, okay? You should know this one already, okay? 
Point slope form might be new, but you're gonna need an algebra two, so might as well memorize it. Um, standard form, eh, I'm not sure it's, eh, eh, you know. So, um, what are the requirements of parallel lines? They have to have the same slope and a different y-intercept, okay? And then the last one, uh, as I look down here, the last one, what are the requirements of perpendicular lines? They have to be the opposite reciprocals. So, I, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, you need to memorize that stuff. You're going to see it quite often over the next couple of um, days, and you're also going to see it uh, when you get into Algebra 2, pre-calculus, all that stuff. So, anyways, uh, thank you for being an attentive audience, and we will see you later.